I've just finished upgrading one of my plugins to be ready for Joomla 1.6 and I thought I'd share how I did it, hopefully getting you to the finish line with less trial and error than I had. The process is simple, but there are a few steps involved. But before you start, always remember to turn Site Debug and Language Debug on and increase the error reporting to maximum in global configuration before you start. So, as you can see, I store my extension as a version on joomlaco.org. The first thing I did was to copy my existing trunk to a new J1.6 branch. Now, I know some people are going to try and do a single package that supports both versions, and if you want to do that, that's fine with me, but my advice is to take your 1.5 and your 1.6 versions in separate trees. I personally think that's going to be better for you in the long term. Let's have a look at the old plugin format. In 1.5, we typically have the main plugin PHP and XML files in the plugin group folder. And then, if you have any supporting files, you'd keep those in a subfolder, typically with the same name as the plugin. If we look at the 1.6 branch, we can see that the plugin is now in its own folder, having the same name as the plugin, in exactly the same way as we would do for a module. The main plugin PHP and XML files are now in this subfolder rather than at the same level as we saw in the 1.5 version. You can also see I have a collection of other folders containing files that support the plugin, and we'll have a look at those in more detail soon. The code for your plugin should be done using a PHP class extended from JPlugin. If you're doing it this way already in 1.5, then there's no further changes you need to do, except where event names have changed in 1.6, and there are a few of those. For more information on the event name changes, see the Joomla documentation wiki. Now, unlike the PHP file, there are a number of important changes to make to the XML file for it to work properly in 1.6. The first change is easy. Just rename the root tag to extension. The second change I made was to add the new supporting folders to the files tag. That was the second easy bit. The third change is a bit more complicated. Let's have a look at the old XML file first. You can see for the plugin parameters, we used a set of params, plural, and param, singular, tags. Most of you should be very familiar with those. If you're used to defining your own J parameter elements, you will have also been using the add path attribute in the params tag. Now let's turn to the 1.6 version of this file. You can see the XML structure is a little different, but it's not too hard to follow, and this structure also applies to components, modules, and templates. The API for doing extension parameters has been changed from using the JParameter class to using a new class called JForm, which is much more powerful. The first step to upgrade this area is to simply search for all the param tags and rename them to field tags. All of the JParameter elements have been ported across to JForm fields, so there's generally no change to the argument list. The second step here is to rename the params tag to field set tags. And with that, you need to give a field set tag a name attribute. In most cases, the name attribute will be either basic or advanced, and this will mirror the two slider panes that were supported in 1.5. However, in 1.6, you can add as many field set tags as you want, which will appear as additional sliders when you edit the plugin. The third step is to wrap all the collection of field set tags in a fields tag that has a name attribute of params, and that's the real name of the database field that the information will be stored in. As an aside, we're no longer storing parameters in any format but have changed to JSON format. You don't have to worry about converting the database value as Joomla does that on the fly. If you're using custom J parameter elements, then you'll need to rename the add path attribute to add field path. And a good place to put that is in the fields tag. However, you will also need to convert your custom J parameter elements into J form fields, but we'll look at that another time. Last of all, we wrap the fields tag in a config tag to delineate the JForm markup from the rest of the extension manifest. 
At the end of the file, I've also added some new tags that will be available in 1.6. The script file tag allows you to add an installer class with methods that can fire on installation, upgrade and removal, as well as before and after the entire installation process. The update servers tag allows you to register an XML update file on your site that Joomla can look at and determine if it has the latest version of your extension. Now let's move on to the language files. These can now be included and I recommend to always do it this way with the plugin package in folders that mirror the structure of the main Joomla language folders. In all cases you will at least have language slash en dash gb. The naming convention for the files is the same but there's a new language file with the extension .sys.ini where you can include language strings that are needed during the installation process. Looking at the files directly, they are very similar to the 1.5 versions. However, because we're using the native PHP ini parser, the format is much more strict. The language keys can only contain letters, numbers and underscores. Spaces and other punctuation characters will cause an error if they are present in the keys. The string values must be wrapped in double quotes. Now, there's a small problem if you need to include double quotes in the string itself. Unfortunately, PHP 5.2 and 5.3 behave differently and we can't just use a backslash to escape the double quote. To include a double quote within the string, you must replace it with double quote underscore qq underscore double quote. What this actually does is breaks the string in two pieces and concatenates it with a PHP constant called underscore qq underscore, which evaluates to a single double quote. If it looks really weird to you, well, it is, but just trust me that it's the only way for it to work on multiple PHP versions reliably. So that's the quick tour, and with all those changes, you can then package your plugin in a compressed form as you would for Joomla 1.5 and start distributing it. I hope this video will help guide you safely through your preparations to support Joomla 1.6, because seriously, it rocks to both use and develop for. Thanks for listening, good luck, and safe coding.